So it's on the up, the second uh, section of the Kaida. So it's not an even development, but a, an, an offbeat uh, 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 placing of the phrasing. So that's something that I think he introduced uh, into, into the Kaida world of the Tabla. So I will play a kind of a little bit later, but I'm just wondering if there's another question. There are many uh, uh, rules to kaidas uh, that need to be discussed, but uh, we'll get to that uh, in, in, in a little bit. But if there's another question, let me know. Dire, dire. Everybody's like, dire, dire. No questions? Oh, dire, okay. dire. No, there's right. a lot of questions. Oh, lots of questions? Okay, one question. Uh, dire, dire. Everyone's, everyone wants oh. to know about it. How do you play it? How do you practice it? Well... थोड़ा धीरे धीरे चलिए तो धीरे धीरे आ जाएगा धीरे धीरे इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फ्रेज फॉर द तबला आई मीन दैट्स द वन थिंग दैट इट रिक्वायर्स फॉर यू टू डू दिस यूज दिस पार्ट ऑफ योर हैंड एंड देर फॉर ऑल दिस दैट यूर डूइंग एंड ऑल दिस दैट यूर डूइंग सडनली टेक्स बैक सीट एंड एंड कम्स फॉर दिस सो हाउ डू यू एक्सर्ट सेम फोर्स प्लेइंग द धीरे धीरे Uh, I have often said that uh, this dhira dhira was first explored uh, in detail by uh, the tabla maestros of Banaras Gharana and uh, it started kind of in Farakkabad uh, but it was mainly developed in in uh, in Banaras and uh, which which found its way through Banaras into Bengal and then in Bengal uh some great tabla maestro I, i think the first time i i heard an interesting dera dera which got my attention was uh pandit kanai datta ji who played dera dera uh, very interestingly i was a concert in ravindra sadan with uh, a, a concert hall in kolkata with uh, nikhil ji nikhil benerjee ji uh, and uh, and that's where i heard it and i said wow this is interesting and then later on it was developed further and 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 the great maestros like pandit sapan chaudhary ji has made dhira dhira very popular and and he's one of the finest uh, exponent of that uh, particular phrase and so is anindo bhai and and now most of the players have followed uh, these two and people like shivankar bhai and uh, uh, vikram bhai and so on they have all uh, uh, excelled in being able to play dhira dhira i'm st- i'm still trying to figure out uh, uh, what is the best way for me to play there there because my hand was set in a different manner a pakhawaj manner and and so i have tried to ask uh people like anindo bhai and sopan ji and all and and what i've been told is uh uh throwing of the hand is an important thing my father also told me that but in a different manner he said throw your hand and, and let it do let the wrist do what it wants to do so something like what Ustad Amir Hussain Khan sahab used to do so so there's a station of dadri dadri and then dr uh, stands out and then comes back uh, in the phrasing in terms of uh, dynamics so that is there in 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 bengal uh, now or uh, also in banaras where pandit anu khelal ji and all used to play uh it was more even and smooth so they used to throw their hands that way out so it was more like playing reverse theater theater an emphasis was on that as opposed to this which is what i learned so at playing with emphasis here is harder but playing out it is much easier so a lot of the relas did not just go da te re ke te ta de re de re ke te ta it went da te re ke te ge re de re de re de re ke te ta so 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 putting it out so and then cupping of the hand so so this doesn't uh, become more prominent but that becomes prominent so these are elements of the dhira dhira which were very beautifully combined together 
in, in Banaras and then later on by uh, famous tabla players of Bengal. And uh, so if you can try and find a way to be able to put all that together, uh, then it is possible to dhire dhire, get your dhire dhire together. <laughs> That's like a hundred questions. Okay, one more question and then we'll go into Kairos, back to Kairos. Okay, a lot of people are asking about Riyaz. How do you focus and how do you get the most out of your Riyaz? How do I focus on Riyaz? Well, okay, so I turn the television on to my favorite channel. <laughs> Watch some nice Western movie. My father used to love Westerns. And, and play. No, that's not true. So, uh, what is the main uh, goal of being able to practice? The goal is not to be able to play like your guru or like your favorite tabla players or etc. etc. Uh, but to be able to take all that information and be able to uh, try to transpose it into your hands. Now, Having said that, it is going to be natural that you're going to be impressed or inspired by tabla players who don't necessarily all belong to one gharana. They belong to different, different gharanas. So, uh, your playing then will have to be in such a way developed so that you are able to take elements of all these different gharanas and put it together. That means uh, somehow combining different techniques into one way of playing. And so that's a, a, a tough ask. So my idea was to try to do that. And so I found that just playing exactly the way my father taught me to do, which is how I started off, uh, I needed to develop my hands and my fingers and, and the way they talk to each other uh, in a more detailed <coughs> manner so that in, it includes all types of combinations and permutations that are thrown out by visiting different gharana styles. And so that means developing both hands to be equally talkative with each other. Equally talkative. So uh, that's what I try to do. So somehow, sometimes I start uh, with like just a take up and try to develop uh, both hands uh, individually and then combining together. Uh, having said that, the kaida is one element that makes that possible uh, to combine uh, these two hands and make them work at a very equal pace and equal level and contributing equally. So that's uh, something that we'll get to. But like for instance, watch out. between them going from 8 to 6, 6 to 8, or 6 to 4, 4 to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 6, and so on, and making those combinations. Again, same with the tabla. So, first straight, then...
So these are starting things. Then one of the things that I saw, uh, you know, Ustad Kirapo Khasar used to stay in our house when he came to Mumbai at some times. I'm talking about late 50s, early 60s, around that time. Because we were living in a place called Mahim, which was then the, like the last uh, uh, boundary of Mumbai. And then became, there was a police uh, uh, checkpoint and then the suburbs. So uh, he would stay and, and then I saw him that he would practice every day. This was an amazing thing to watch. A great maestro like him uh, still practice, did not just rely on uh, the idea of all oh, my hands are ready now. So and so he would do more uh, like a shiahi come uh, uh, chanti uh, practice. So so. So this is one of the things that he would do. So I've learned to do that as well. So just to get this loosened up and these guys kind of get used to it. And then combination and permutations of that. So. And then from Dha on the Kinar to Gurdu Meda. So. Because when you're playing phrases like Tere Keta, Dene Gena, Dene Tere Keta and so on, uh, this, the CI part, tends to stand out. And, and so when you learn to do this, you learn to figure out how to be able to dynamically control that. So, you know, you can, that's why you hear like, not, so you learn to control all that stuff. So that was another uh, kind of practice. When I sat with my father though, uh, in, in, at home, uh, it was never like, okay, let's just practice or or so on. He always uh, had me playing like as if I'm playing in a concert. So it was more like I had to play with him. So Lera, and then uh, he would start some kind of a kaida or something and then he would throw a variation out and I would have to respond to it or play it back and, and so on. It was more like that. And, and so most of the practice that I had to do, I had to do on my own. And uh, then sit with him and, 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 and try to uh, figure out what was coming at me at breakneck speed and, and without breaking my neck, uh, being able to play it back. So simple things like these da double doubles and then development and then introducing terekete into it will work too. Like And 
does this, it develop, uh, loosens up this area. And then it doesn't necessarily help you with the bayan as much, but what it does is it does allow you to understand this and uh, the relationship between closed and open bayan. Because there is cray that you're playing. And how you place the cray allows you to be able to back and forth quickly. So, so that will help you when you are playing kaidas. Phrases like those, it'll help you with those. So, uh, that is basically what I do with Riyaz. Uh, so now I want to come back to Kaida because, of course, we do themes and we do variations. But there are supposed to be rules on uh, that one must follow. And that's why it differentiates between, uh, there, there's, there's a difference between Kaida or uh, Rela or something. Uh, these days, we also tend to play Rela like as if you're playing Kaitas. In other words, uh, although you should be, we use different phrases for Rela, we still consider them as theme and variations. So we tend to play Rela's, you know, long Rela's with like 20 variations. And, and so for me, there has to be a balance between that and what the Kaida is because Kaida is supposed to be themes and variations. Rela is supposed to, in my opinion, and that I may be totally wrong, is supposed to be something that you ulat, pull, palat, accent, and do all that stuff. And, and so uh, either that, or we must figure out a way to play kaidas which do not use phrases that are used in Rela and, 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 and approach it that way. So kaidas meaning, okay, you have the theme, so those are the syllables and phrases that you have that are something that you can re rely on and, and draw from. Nothing else, it's like, it's like uh, developing a raga. You have a five note scale, pentatonic, uh, that's all you've got and you've got to work with that. So those are the phrases that you have. Secondly, I think sometimes the Delhi uh, uh, ustads or uh, maestros impose even further tighter things on it. For instance, uh, they said, okay, if you're playing dha te te dha te te dha dha te te dha te na gena, so there's only one te te every time. Dha te te, dha te te, dha dha te te, dha ge te na gena. So at no point in any of the variations, you should uh, uh, introduce two te te's in a row. So you can't go dha te te dha te te dha dha te 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 te. No. So that's something that uh, was also at emphasized as and when it pleased the maestro uh, uh, and the other of course thing is that uh, 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 the length has to be always even whether it's 4, 8, 16 in Pintal or uh, 32 and uh, it should rhyme I'd like a poem would like Dhati Dagati Nagina is the end so every variation must end with that so that you have an ending that everybody recognizes uh, there are kaidas in Delhi which almost sound like a very long variation and, and, and I would suggest that one should uh, shy away from it, just stick with ones which are within the one cycle. I'll give you an example. Uh, there's a simple thing. Okay? Or that's a grace, cray. And we sometimes subconsciously or without thinking about it, do put it in, even though it's not in the theme. So those kind of grace notes are possible. Okay, you can get away with that. But this led to another theme that I heard from uh, a Delhi Maestro, uh, which was so long and I said, how do you create a variation? Like 13, 14, 15, 16. Already, that's how long it is. So when you have a theme like that, how do you, I mean, two cycles long theme, four cycles long variations, that gets to be a little, I mean, you can do it and show your prowess as a as a as a creator. 
in that area, but it doesn't help the audience. You audience cannot keep track of what have you've come up with and when is the Kali arriving and so on. So these are things to be considered. One uh, uh, thing I would say is that Kaidas are played differently in different places, right? Like for instance, Dati Dagena, Dhatari Kri Dati Dagate Nagena. So it's one Tere Kita. You should be playing that according to the daily idea. But if you go to Banaras, Dati Dagena, Dati Kri Dati Dagate Nagena, Dati Kri Dati Dagena, Dati Kri Dati Dagate Nagena, or Dati Dagena, Dati Kri Dati Dagate Nagena, Dati Kri Dati Dagena, but Dati Kri Dati Kri Dati Dagate Nagena, Dati Dagena, Dati Kri Dati Dagate Nagena. Dati dagi na dati kiri 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 my first kaira that my father had taught me the this one and and see where it goes okay 13 14 15 16 should be clearly placed and coming out of the Khali into the sum should be clearly placed. So what I see as a good example of that is if you're playing da da gena da ga tinna da gena da ga tinna kena da da gena da ga tinna kena going into thin so Khali ta ta kena ta ga tinna ta kena ta ga tinna kena da Dhagena, dhag, dhinnagena. Dhinnagena, dha, bringing it back. So, how are you? How's everything going? And the answer is, oh, I'm fine, thank you very much. Ta, ta, kena, ta, katena, ta, kena, ta, katena. Dha, dha, kena, dha, ga, dhinnagena. So, it's, it's a resolve, it brings you back. So, tina, kena, going into khali, dhinnagena, coming out of khali. Okay? So, uh, and... According to your taste, the rest of the thinnas or dhinnas you can uh, work with, so uh, as you please. So, 
developing is that way and, and, and just one finger of course you can uh, get uh, more worked up into it this I played it at a, at a medium tempo so it was clear for you to hear the kaira uh, and so that was one thing that I played then he taught me a kaira same kaira but addition of T so dha dhagena dagatena dhagena dagatena gena dha dhagena dagatena gena became dha dhati dhagena tena dhati dhagena tena gena dha dhati dha so dha dhagena became dha dhati dha so dha dhati dhagena tena dhati dhagena tena gena dha dhati dhagena tena gena dha dhati dhagena tena dhati dhagena tena gena dha dhati dhagena tena gena You can practically transpose the same vistaras that were in the other kaira into this it's because the, 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 the length uh, and the number of beats are the same, just T has been substituted in there. So. His idea. Uh, if if Delhi was there, then the tiriket hopefully would not have come into play. But if uh, but because it was him, it came into play. So. So now I'm feeling inside of me that I want to slip in a cray every now and then because it seems natural. So da ga da ti da ga na te na ga na ga na ga da 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 ga says so so I'm doing it and, and, and so the development of the Kaida uh, goes into a whole different direction with different sets of do's and don'ts and, and, and so it goes on like that so And 
so kaidas can go on like that and and dhate ke dhate ke dhate ke dhate ke dhate if i was to play i would try to follow uh the way the daily system uh suggests it should be or any other daily kaida i would try to follow the same manner but uh i would um, take liberties if i'm playing kaidas which were suggested from gharanas like uh, punjab or banaras or uh, farakabad uh, cuz their technique and their ability to be able to introduce a full hand idea is something uh, uh very interesting and there are kaidas that are that allow you some very interesting sparkle uh like a what was that mm -hmm. like din tere ki ta played in there or you know the famous usta tere ko khasa mm what was that different things like that so kaidas also have uh, elements that sparkle uh, but how to keep that away from rela is something that i'm struggling with and and hopefully uh, an interesting balance would be arrived at with the help of other tabla maestros and so on so for so uh we'll i'll hold the kaidas here and i'll take one more question what did you have for breakfast huh what did you have for what did i have for breakfast are you kidding tabla players sleeping in late and trying to start at 11 o'clock breakfast <laughs> well i had half a banana and a few almonds that's what i did and and i was yeah, this is uh my studio practice office area it's it's a little like a uh, 3 minutes away from my house uh so uh this is where i practice uh tony g practices and we have our offices and everything and so uh, i ran over here as quickly as i could now that we've done i'm going to go and have maybe a little bit more cereal or some toast and maybe a hard boiled egg or something and uh, you know no nalli nehari or payas or anything like that uh in morin county it's it's a it's a health conscious county everybody goes for hikes and walks and and jogs and 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 mountain bikes and everything around here so for me to even suggest that everybody looks at me strange like like which planet did you come from <laughs> so anyway okay uh thank you all very much for this friday and and we will see you next friday